Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Thursday, March 17th, 2022, St. Patrick's Day. Today, we're actually going to do a reverse of what we normally do. We'll start with reality TV and then do news and notes. Golf, NHL, NBA, college basketball with all of them. The round of 64, the women's first four in the NIT, and then best bet, we'll close the show. We're going to start with Survivor today. Um... It was an interesting show last night, to say the least. Um, I felt that it was a good episode. And um, the immunity reward challenge was that one tribe member uh, directed two pairs of blindfolded tribe mates to bag of puzzle pieces and then they brought their four tribe mates to a station to direct them in solving a puzzle the first two tribes to finish won the immunity and the first place tribe won a large fishing kit the second place tribe won a smaller fishing kit and the last place tribe had to forfeit their flint Vade and Ika won the challenge And then the um, tribe that had to face trial was Taku, which is down to four. Um, We did not have a decision game. So um, there is no... um, risk votes involved here, but Marianne had a risk vote from last episode, which, um, it was a gain for her, so which was good. And the one that got eliminated was Myra, who, um, Played shot in the dark. And it was a unanimous to send Myra home among her peers. And then um Myra did have a shot in the dark, but it didn't work out for her. So it should be a fun episode next week. Um, Team Vadi's been the best um, tribe so far. With um, Jenny, Chanel, Lydia, Daniel, Mike, and uh, and Hi. That's a, a really good group. And then Taku's down the floor with Lindsay, Marianne, Jonathan, and Omar. And Ika is down the five with Roxbury. Romeo, Swate, Tori, and Dre. So it should be a fun uh, next couple of weeks on the show. All right, Mass Singer. Um, we'll recap last night's episode. Um, group A is now down to four with the mix of the good, the bad, and the cuddly all involved. Um, Eric Stone Street was the guest panelist. He is the host of Domino Masters, which I want to start covering on the show eventually, too, which we haven't had the time for. So, um, first up went, um, Firefly of Team Good. Um, they really didn't give out much clues on today's episode, but they did have a mega clue, and she said that Pharrell was, um, was a big part of her career. And she's a major keys of her career. Making everyone think it's Alicia Keys. It's not Alicia Keys. Because this reminded me of Pepper last season when she said driver's license that had everyone and their brother thinking it was Olivia Rodrigo, including myself. But I thought it was Olivia Rodrigo before she said that clue. But Firefly performed a pretty young thing by Michael Jackson. Good performance. Um... Eric Stone Street guest Aisha Taylor 
or Aisha Tyler. That's what uh, Jenny said last week. Uh, Robin said Keisha Cole. Nicole said Lauren Hill. Um, Team Bad. Um, had Cyclops go. Um, talks about having a, another side to his bad self, and he performed um, "Suspicious Minds" by Elvis Presley. And his clue was um, Metarit 1988. I have a guess for Cyclops, but I don't feel super about it. Um, there's two names that entered my mind um john goodman from monster zinc maybe it's because of what the character looks like i know billy crystal played the character with the one eye that was green but during his performance to suspicious minds i was getting a um vibe of if i didn't have nothing if i didn't have you from that movie and the other name that popped into my mind was randy jackson of name that tune so It'd be fitting for Randy Jackson to be on the show. I, I love Randy Jackson. I guessed him to um be a contestant on the show two seasons ago. But this could very well be Randy Jackson. I'm going to go either John Goodman or Randy Jackson. I don't know which one. But I wrote down John Goodman like after after the performance. And then I thought about Randy like later on. Um, Ken Jong said Chris Pratt. Um, Eric Stone Street said John Lithgow. And Nicole Scherzinger said Rob Thomas. Then came up Ram of Team Bad. Um, Ram performed Learn to Fly by the Foo Fighters. Um, and his mega clue was Emmy. And says, um, add to collection. Um, in terms of the panelist guests, is, um... Ken Jung said Jason Sudeikis. Eric said Ty Barrow. And Jen, Jenny McCarthy said uh, Jason Biggs. And then the celebrity VFFs are back. And Ram popped up was Kate Hudson. I could tell you a connection with Kate Hudson and um and uh, Ram in a second. Um, Team Cuddly's thing of a Bob one. Um. He said that people think he's big and scary, and his he performed perfect by Ed Sheeran, which I thought was amazing. The best performance of the evening. Um, and his mega clue was Shields. Um, I have a guess for Thingamabob, but I don't know if it's this person or not. Maybe based on his voice, and I think he's trying to throw off his usual voice. I think this could be Usher. I've been uh, banging the drum for Usher to come on the show for a long time. And maybe it's him, maybe it's not. But I thought about him last night. Um, Jenny McCarthy said The Rock. Eric said Omar Benson Miller. And Robin said Jason Momoa. And then we had The Duel. Ram versus Firefly. Ram performed Take Me Home Country Roads by John Denver. And Firefly performed God is a Woman by Ariana Grande. And who went home? The Ram as Firefly survived the duel. Firefly was a little selfish and uh, not showing sportsmanship. I guess that was produced, but... um. She walked off stage when she found out that she was a part of the duel. So Ram went home. Firefly survives. And Firefly did not deserve to go home, by the way. She did not. Ram did. Ram, I thought, was the worst of the group. Um, My first guess was Peyton Manning because of um some clues. And there was, like, horses in there to make me think of Broncos and Colts. So it made me think of Peyton Manning. Then my final guess was Tom Brady because um, 
There are some hints like Ram, the first team Tom Brady beat in the Super Bowl was the Rams. Um, the horses, Colts, and Broncos because um, he owned Peyton Manning in his career. There's another Peyton Manning, so I thought of Tom Brady. And plus him announcing that he was coming back recently it made me think, oh, it could be Tom. Um, so the judges don't do first impression guesses anymore. They just do final guesses. Jenny said Jason Biggs. Nicole said Ken Slater. Ken said Jason Sudeikis. Eric and Robin both said Joe Buck. And who was it? The new voice of Monday Night Football. ESPN's now own Joe Buck. I thought it was a great reveal. Um, fun way to say farewell to Fox for Joe Buck. Be like, see, I'm going to ESPN. But here we are, Joe Buck on the Mass Singer. Something that um, I've wanted for a while personally. I just thought he would be a fun f- fit for the show. And we got it. You know, the media is probably going nuts over it right now. And his peers, too. Um, So perfect for the show. And I think the costume fit him well. I'm mad at myself because I didn't like. While he he sang, pick up on like signs of his speaking voice and his singing voice, and that's what made Eric Stone Street figure out that it was indeed Joe Buck. And in the Ram fits Joe Buck too because the formerly known St. Louis Rams. So there's that St. Louis tie because Joe Buck's from St. Louis, so that makes a lot of sense. The quarterback clue was a nod to his partner. On TV, his new partner on ESPN, old partner on Fox, Troy Aikman. So, um, that's just so fun that Joe was on The Masked Singer. And I'm sure his wife and kids were fired up for it, too. Um, yeah, so Joe Buck. And um, I don't know next week's episode of The Masked Singer. And um, if we're seeing a different group of contestants... Or what? And speaking of Joe Buck, we'll just go into news and notes and start with the fact that ESPN made it official that him and Aikman are going to be the new Monday Night Football booth. I think that's awesome. Um, ESPN finally has a good Monday Night announcer for the first time since Mike Tirico. And it's so great. And I'm going to make a prediction. I think eventually... Um, ESPN's going to acquire the rights to the World Series, and Joe will call that too. And I guess he'll call that with, like, A-Rod or whoever's calling the baseball game. So it'll probably be A-Rod. Because him and A-Rod did games together on Fox, so they have, like, that chemistry thing. And now for Fox, Kevin Burkhart's going to be their new number one for football. With Charles Davis as his analyst. And then for baseball, Joe Davis is going to be the new number one with John Smoltz as the analyst. So uh, Fox's loss is ESPN's gain. And now the question is, um, when does Joe Buck start calling baseball? And they expand his role beyond Monday Night Football, and that's what he deserves too. Because I think he's the voice of baseball too. He's the voice of football. The voice of baseball. And I think that he is one of the best two announcers of all sports right now. It's him and Mike Breen, and ESPN now employs both of them. I mean, their hockey lead is Sean McDonough. I mean, if they could have gotten Doc Emmerich to come out of retirement, that would have been amazing. And then they'd have easily the best three announcers in all sports. Easy. But I think the number three... Announcer in all sports right now is probably Ian Eagle, and he's employed by Turner. Or Jim Nance. Jim Nance. Jim Nance. He was employed by Turner, and then Ian Eagle. But I had, for some reason, I wasn't thinking football. I had basketball in my head for some reason. I thought about Ian Eagle. But I mean, it's Ian Eagle and Jim Nance. Those are, I think, the next two best announcers other than Breen and Buck. All right, rest of news and notes. Um... Freddie Freeman signs with the Dodgers, six-year, $162 million deal, so they finally get it done. Um, 
I think that was the most he was going to get because of his age. And that's why the other teams backed away from it. Um, This was announced in the middle of the Rutgers-Notre Dame game last night, which we'll talk about in the college basketball segment. But great ad for the Dodgers. They're absolutely loaded. They're the team to beat in the National League, in my mind. Um, I think the Universal DH will benefit Freeman. It will benefit a lot of guys on the Dodgers. But I think that's amazing that they were able to pull that off. Um, And the Braves um, do it. I mean, I hate this use of frame addition by subtraction because of how much I love Freddie Freeman. But Matt Olson's really, really good. And um, they couldn't have asked for a better replacement for Freddie Freeman, although they had to give up a ton. Um, Red Sox signed Trevor Story after missing out on Freddie Freeman. Um, so I guess they would play him at second base. That'd be weird. Um, speaking of trades um Matt Chapman was traded from the A's to the Blue Jays big return back including Gunnar Hoagland and that is a terrific ad for Toronto who is all in on winning now and you can make a case that they have to make the uh, ALCS for their season to be considered a success. So it's Hoagland, Zach Logue, and Kirby Sneed, and Kevin Smith. So those are Toronto's number four, number nine, number 27, and number 30 prospects. Um, I have a take. Um. Oakland did better in the Olsen deal than the Chapman deal. I like Gunnar Hoagland. Good add to the farm system, but I think they could have done better in, in the Chapman trade. I really do. But tremendous, tremendous ad for Toronto. Um, Royals signed Zach Ranky one year, $13 million. I love that deal for them, and if they, they're bad, they can uh, trade him. Chris Bryant to the Rockies, seven years, $182 million. That's a stunner. Um... Everyone was reporting that the Rockies answered a mix a few days ago, and they were actually able to pull it off. So, at least they replaced the production that Story's leaving behind. And Chris Bryant's going to put up some numbers on it on that team, but unfortunately, it's a bad team, and um, I won't be like completely stunned if Bryant doesn't last the contract there. Yankees could be in the mix for Oakland's Sean Manaya and Frankie Montas. Um, if the Yankees were able to trade for one of those guys, that I think improves their chances of um, making the postseason. Um, I love the thought of Manaya on the Yankees. Cole Manaya, lefty duo, I love it. Or righty lefty. So I. Really, really like that thought. Frankie Montas, I think, is awesome. But there's just, like, red flags with him, I think. But I love the idea of Shamanaya on the Yankees. Um, Jock Peterson to the Giants. I like that signing for them. Very fast player. Um, I think he can take advantage of the right field in San Francisco. So I like that deal a lot. Um... Kyle Schwarber to the Phillies. So that's a um really uh decent signing for for Philly. Four years, eighty million for Schwarber. Um I think that he's gonna mash there, I really do. Um Suzuki's deal with the Cubs. Five years, $85 million, not $70 million. So it's the largest ever for a Japanese position player to the majors. So we'll see if he lives up to that deal. Um, Eddie Rosario back to Atlanta, two years, $18 million. Good contract. Um, Cubs side David Robertson, one-year deal. Sean Doolittle back to the Nats, one-year deal. Um, Royals acquire Amir Garrett from Cincinnati, exchange for Mike Miner and Cash. Um, 
Love the deal for KC. I think Amir Garrett in a bigger ballpark will succeed. Um, you know, the Reds are continuing to blow it up. And now there's rumors that uh, Toronto is going for Jose Ramirez with plans to put him at second base. That would be wild if they're able to pull that off. Jose Ramirez, Matt Chapman, Bo Bichette, Vlad Jr. Like, that's insane. Fernando Tatis Jr. having wrist surgery this morning after offseason fracture. So, I should say yesterday morning he had it. Um, we talked about that a little bit yesterday. Um, Chris Dell to start to miss the start of the season with a, fra- a stress fracture in his rib cage and no time timble for return. That's brutal for Boston. They could not afford that, especially Toronto making their moves. Um, David Quinn to coach the 2022 Team USA in the um, IIHF Hockey World Championship. Um, he did a decent job in the Olympics, and I think he deserves his chance with um, Team USA, with um, the IIHF. Rangers acquire Frank Ferranto from the Panthers in exchange for a 2022 fourth-round pick. I think that's a good de- pickup for the Rangers. I don't think they're done yet at the deadline. Um, a nice trade for uh, the Panthers getting Ben Chirot, giving up a 2023 first-round pick, a 2022 sec- uh, fourth-round pick, and prospect Tyler Smilinak. I like the package for Montreal, and I love the addition for Florida. He'll help them tremendously. Capitals re-sign Joe Snively. Two years, $1.6 million to stay with the Caps. So that is a nice signing for Washington to uh, get done long-term. Um, Tomas Hurdle, um, contract extensions, eight years, um, $64 million. Um, I think that is a uh, good resigning for San Jose, keeping an asset long term. Um, Kevin Durant responds to a fan courtside as um, he handed over his fine money after this. You should see the video; it's hilarious. Um, Nicole Jokic reaches ten thousand points, as becomes the second fastest player. To reach 10,000 points, 5,000 rebounds, and uh, 3,000 assists. Russell Westbrook claps back at the Timberwolves. Um, Nobody over there has done anything in this league. Yikes. Timberwolves were uh, trash talking a little bit. Um, Steph Curry... Um, did not return last night against the Celtics through a foot injury. Ben Simmons had a back injection. No timetable for return. And in football, um, J.D. McKissick, um, returning to Washington. $7 $7 million deal for one year after uh, initially agreeing to a deal with the Bills. So that's the second time that's happened this offseason where a player agrees to a deal with one team and it goes to a different team. Except this is reverse. He went back to Washington instead of going somewhere else like Randy Gregory did. Raiders trade Yannick and Gakwe to the Colts for Rocky Sin. Um, I like that deal for Indy. Nice pass rusher. Um, And in the Raiders... um. Get a risk here at the Yus- Rock Yusin. And uh, they do this after signing Chandler Jones. So I like that deal. Rams working, were working to bring back Von Miller. But then they didn't get him back as he signed to uh, with the Bills. Six years, $120 million. That's insane of a contract. That's a terrible contract. But apparently it's three years, 54 um, so that's 
just crazy. Um, Chris Godwin back to the Bucks three or sixty million. He did that because Tom Brady's back. Um, Browns want an adult at quarterback. Jimmy G is a name not to ignore for Cleveland as breakup with Baker Mayfield primed to happen. Yikes. They just not don't like Baker Mayfield. Giants signed um, Ricky Seals Jones. That's a um, decent signing for them after losing um, Evan Ingram. Um, Titans cutting uh, Julio Jones just after one year. That's insane. He just makes too much money. Um. Gronk posted a video that was getting a lot of buzz on Twitter, hinting at a potential return to the Bucks. I think he's going to go back now that Brady's back. Um, so Darius Smith back to the Ravens for his $35 million. I like that he's back on Baltimore. Um, Falcons eyeing Jarvis Landry. And Miles Jack, two years, $16 million with the Steelers. I like that pick up a lot. I think that it's a good fit for Miles Jack. I don't remember if I mentioned this yesterday or not, but there are, is talk that the Falcons are a sleeper team and that the Sean Watson sweepstakes, which would be wild, which would probably mean Matt Ryan going back to Houston. That would be their version of the Matt Stafford trade. Um, Any non-sports news to uh, talk about? Yes. Um, Kathy Hochul got booed during puck drop at um at a Rangers game. <laughs> um, I'm not surprised. I think they um Cuomo obviously would have been booed. Um Eric Adams probably would have been booed because maybe there's some Nets fans in the crowd that are not happy with the Kyrie Irving thing. So um I'm not really that surprised. Biden expected to announce eight hundred million additional aid to Ukraine, as he announced it, as he said, um, to aid Ukraine for difficult days ahead. And then he calls Puntin a war criminal, and then Ukrainian theater destroyed with a thousand people hiding. And this war is entering the fourth week. And then Ukraine and Russia. Negotiators reportedly draft 15-point peace plan to end the war. Hopefully this war ends sooner rather than later. Um, Fox News correspondent Amy Kellogg worked with a cameraman killed in Ukraine, which is crazy. And that's really it for uh, news and notes. We're going to go over the... Um, leaderboard the very early leaderboard at the um Villardo um Valspar I was close I didn't remember what the name was um there's actually no scores right now it's just getting underway. They're in uh, round four. I don't see any score updates. So um, it should be a fun tournament. I um, picked Justin Thomas to win. Um, so we'll obviously get more into this tomorrow. And I believe Justin Thomas was a 10-1 to favorite to win this tournament. All right, NHL, we'll look back on the games from last night and look ahead to what I think is a busy window for tonight. Blue Jackets over the Sens, 4 to 1. Wild over the Bruins, 2 to or 4 to 2. Flames over the Devils, 6 to 3. And the Lightning over the Kraken, 4 to 1. Big slate tonight, 7 o'clock. You have the Islanders and the Rangers from the Garden. Huge game for New York. 
the Rangers, I'm saying. The Islanders are out of it, as we know. They're, um, I think, trying to trade some veterans that um, they uh, don't really need that are on expiring contracts. That's what they should be doing. Um, Rangers minus 142. Isles are plus 118. Over under 5.5. Over is plus 104. Under is minus 128. Isles plus 1.5 is minus 3.3. Rangers minus 1.5 is plus 182. I'm going over 5.5 at plus 104. That's insane. Hurricanes, Maple Leafs. Carolina's minus 118. Toronto's minus 102. Over under 6. Over is minus 128. Under is plus 104. Carolina minus 1.5 is plus 210. Toronto plus 1.5 is minus 265. Um, Austin Matthews is suspended, but I think that Toronto could still win this game. They're home. They're minus 102. I like that. Stars, Canadians. Stars minus 194. Montreal plus 160. Over under 6. Over is minus 105. Under is minus 115. Dallas minus one half is plus one twenty eight. Montreal plus one half is minus one fifty eight. In this game, I'm gonna go with the under six or over six and minus one oh five. I said under by mistake, but I like the over. Predators Flyers. Preds minus one seventy two. Flyers plus one forty two. Over under six. Overs minus one fifteen. Unders minus one oh five. Preds minus one half is plus one forty two. Flyers plus one half is minus one seventy six. I'm gonna go. With another over. Capitals Blue Jackets. Caps minus 200. Columbus plus 164. Over under 6.5. Over is minus 128. Under is plus 104. Washington minus 1.5 is plus 120. Columbus plus 1.5 is minus 148. I'm going to go with the contrarian under 6.5 at plus 104. 8 o'clock. Penguins Blues. Pens minus 118. Blues minus 102. Over under 8. Or over. Huh. Six overs minus 118, others minus 104. Pens minus one half is plus 205. Blues plus one half is minus 260. I like St. Louis, they're home. Um, I think that they are on a nice little run. They beat the Rangers, I think they'll beat the Penguins here. Nine o'clock, the Sabres and the Oilers. Oilers minus 255, Sabres plus 205. Over under six and a half, overs minus 124, others plus 102. Buffalo plus one half is minus one fourteen. Edmonton minus one half is minus one oh six. I'm gonna go with the Savers puck line plus one half at pl- minus one fourteen just for this game to be competitive. Ten o'clock, Red Wings, Canucks. Canucks minus two hundred, Red Wings plus one sixty four over under six and a half. Overs plus one oh four under is minus one twenty eight. Red Wings plus one half is minus one fifty. Vancouver minus one half is plus one twenty two. With a win tonight, the Vancouver Canucks. Could be in the playoff spot. If. And I specify this. If. Dallas loses to Montreal. Because Dallas has games on in hand on them. If Vegas loses tonight. They're going to drop out of the playoffs. I think Dallas and Vancouver both win. To tie that last wild card spot. And not only that, Vancouver not only will be headed their division round to Vegas, they'll be one point back of Edmonton for third. And five points back of the Kings for second. So I really like the Canucks in this game to win. I would put them in a uh, multi-team money line parlay with a couple NCAA teams, and then I'll go over 6.5 of the Red Wings at plus 104 in this game. Sharks-Kings. Kings minus 162. Sharks plus 134. Over under 5.5 minus with 10 each way. Sharks plus 1.5 is minus 194. Kings minus 1.5 is plus 156. I'm going to go with the Kings in regulation at even money. Because there's some a little pressure now on the Kings to start winning games. In 10-3, the Panthers and the Golden Knights. Panthers minus 182. Vegas plus 150. Over under 6.5. Overs minus 114. Unders minus 106. Florida minus 1.5 is plus 138. Vegas plus 1.5 is minus 170. I'm going over 6.5 minus 114. I think Vegas game overs are no-brainers now. NBA will look back on last night's games and look ahead to the lone game for tonight, which is insane that there's only one game. Tonight in the NBA. It's because of March Madness, and that's fine. Um, Hornets over the Hawks, 116-106. Hawks plus 
76ers over the Cavaliers, 118-114. Nuggets over the Wizards, 127-109. Mavs over the Nets, 113-111. Knicks over the Blazers, 128-98. Suns over the Rockets, 129-112. Lakers over the Timberwolves, or vice versa. Timberwolves over the Lakers, 124-104. Spurs over the Thunder, 122-120. Jazz over the Bulls, 125-110. Celtics over the Warriors, 110-88. Bucks over the Kings, 135-126. And the Raptors over the Clippers, 103-100. One game tonight, 7 o'clock NBA TV, the Pistons and the Magic. My projection is Detroit by a quarter total, 223 and 90. Wait a second, that's not right. That's not right at all. Um, Like, literally not right at all. Um. So, in terms of injuries, um, so, it should be Orlando five and a half. That's my mistake. I, uh, I miscounted in terms of the injuries. Total 223,9500. And it's, Four and two nineteen. I like the over. Um, no Jeremy Grant. I know, but um, I think this game still goes over because I think some of these young guys on Orlando are playing inspired like Franz Wagner and such. So I don't think there'll be any defense played. So I'll go over two nineteen in that game. All right, round of sixty four. We'll go over those games in a moment, but first we have to. Go over the first four games from last night. Um, South Region 16 seeds. Wright State over Bryan 93 82. Best bet was a total absolute loser. And West Region first for 11 seeds. Notre Dame over Rutgers 89 87 in double overtime in what was a classic of a first four game between the Big Ten and the ACC. All right, now I look ahead to today's games. 12-15 on CBS. South Region. 11 seed Michigan, 6 seed Providence. For this game, I project a pick em and 141. And it is... Michigan by one total, 137. I'm going to go with the over in this game, but I think that Michigan will win. Midwest region, 13 seed South Dakota State and 4 seed Providence from the Key Bank Center. Projection, South Dakota State by two and a quarter, total 149 and 9 twentieths, and it's two and 147 and a half. I am going with South Dakota State plus a 2 and plus 114 to win this game outright. West Region, 19 Memphis, 18 Boise State from the Moda Center. Projection, Memphis by 4 and 3 quarters, total 136 and 2 fifths, and it's 3 and 134. I like the over. East Region, 16 seed Norfolk State, 1 seed Baylor from Dickies. Projection, Baylor 16, total 139 and a half, and it is 20 and a half and 137. I'm taking Norfolk in the points to cover. South Region 14 seed Longwood, 3 seed Tennessee from Gamebridge projection. Um, Tennessee by 15, total 138 and 3 20ths, and it's 18 and 132 and a half. I love the over in this game. By the way, that game's 245 CBS. South Dakota State Providence, 1240 TV. Memphis Boise's 145 TNT. And Norfolk Baylor, 2 o'clock TBS. 310 True TV. Midwest Region. 12 seed Richmond, 5 seed Iowa from Key Bank. My projection is Richmond by 1.5 total, 147 and 11 twentieths. And it is Iowa 10.5 total, 151. I love Richmond getting the 10.5 and plus 440 to win outright. I think this is your 12 over 5 that nobody expects. West Region from the Motor Center, 310 True TV, 16 seed Georgia State, 1 seed Gonzaga, 
Projection, Gonzaga 18 total, 144 and 3 tenths. And it's 22 and a half and 148 and a half. I'm going to take Georgia State getting the points. Um, 4.30 TBS. East region, 19 Marquette, 18 North Carolina from Dickies. My projection is North Carolina by a whopping 15 and a half, total 147 and a quarter. And it's 3 and a half and 151 and a half. I'm taking North Carolina by the 3 and a half. They're just way better than Marquette. 6.50 TNT. West region, 12 seed New Mexico State, 5 seed UConn. From Key Bank projection, UConn four and a half total, one thirty eight and thirteen twentieths, and it's six and a half and one thirty two. I like the over here, and I also like New Mexico State to cover. At seven ten CBS, East Region fifteen seed St. Peter's and two seed Kentucky. My projection here, St. Peters as an 18 half point underdog total of 136 and 19 twentieths. And it is Kentucky by uh, 17 and a half and the total of hmm, 132. I like the over. East Region, 12 seed Indiana, 5 seed St. Mary's, 720 TBS from the Moda Center. Projection St. Mary's by 8, total 133 and 17 twentieths. And it's 2.5 and, and 126 and a half. I'm going to lay the points with St. Mary's against Indiana. 727 True TV, Midwest Region, 19 Creighton, 18 San Diego State. From Dickey's projection is San Diego State by four and a quarter total, 128 and 19 twentieths. And it's two and 120. Over, over, over. 920 TNT, West Region from the Key Bank Center, 13 seed Vermont, 4 seed Arkansas. My projection is Arkansas four and a half total one forty and nine twentieths, and it's five and one thirty nine. Slight over. Nine forty on CBS East Region ten seed San Francisco seventeen Murray State from Gainbridge. My projection is Murray by five total one forty and thirteen twentieths, and it's five and one thirty. Oh, that's the wrong one. Two and one thirty seven and a half. I'm gonna go with Murray State minus the two. Nine fifty on TBS. East region thirteen seed Akron, four seed UCLA from the Moda Center projection. UCLA sixteen total one thirty seven and seven twentieths. And it's thirteen and a half and one twenty eight and a half. Over. And last but not least, at 9.57 on True TV, Midwest Region, Texas Southern is your 16 seed and your 1 seed is Kansas. From Dickey's projection, Kansas 18.5, total 140 and 17.20, and it's 22.5 and 145.5. And I'm going to go with the under in that game. Alrighty, now I'm going to um, do um, women's first four. Um, we'll go over the games from last night and look ahead to the games being played tonight. Greensboro Region, 16 seed Howard over 16 seed Incarnate Word, 55 51. And 11 seeds Dayton over DePaul, 88 57 in the Greensboro region as well. Um, Now we look ahead to today's two games, 7 o'clock on ESPN 2. 16 seeds from the Bridgeport region 
Mount St. Mary's and Longwood. My projection here is um, from Reynolds Coliseum, Longwood by four. And it is four and a half and one for 35 and a half. I'll go with the over just because. And at 9 o'clock on ESPN2, 11 seeds from the Spokane region, Florida State, Missouri State from Assembly Center. My projection is Florida State by 1.5, and, and it's Mary State by 3.5, total 119. Give me Florida State plus 3.5 and plus 130 to win the game outright. All right, now we're going to go over NIT from... Last night from the men's and look ahead to the games for, or no, actually no, um, we don't have any games to uh, look ahead to yet. We just have to go over yesterday's games, so that's my bad. Um, Wake Forest over Towson, 74-64, Dayton over Toledo, 74-55. Virginia over Mississippi State, 60-57. Estime over Nichols, 68-58. Northern Iowa over St. Louis, 80-68. BYU over Long Beach, 8 72 And Florida over Iona, 79-74. NIT resumes on Saturday at 12 o'clock on ESPN. Um, we will go over the NIT games for the weekend on tomorrow's podcast. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day. Brought to you by FanDuel. Um, there's a lot of games I like today. Side in total. I'm going to lay points with somebody. Or take points with somebody. And I'm going to double down on Richmond getting the points against Iowa. I love it. I mean, my numbers say it. I know everybody's darlings Iowa because they just won the conference tournament. But... I think they're prone to be upset in this first round. So give me Richmond plus 10 and a half um, to at least cover number against Iowa for best bet of the day, although I did predict the outright upset in my bracket. All right, so that's it for the show today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything from tonight in the NCAA tournament and the women's first four. Look ahead to the weekend, which is going to be very busy. We have CBI starting two in an NBA and NHL. News and notes, American Idol, golf, MLS, and best bet. So I hope you guys have a great day, everyone.